Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. My sisters and brothers, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins.
It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who will eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night, and they shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and anything that remains until morning, you shall burn it. And this is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it early. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night. And I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. And all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. Where I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout all your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling in drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thank you, Jesus.
read commentaries on this passage, I soon discovered that it is one that is easily misunderstood. In fact, I suspect that at least one or two of our folks have been on the receiving end of what some church leaders assume is a prescription for how we're supposed to deal with those unrepentant sinners. But that isn't what this passage is really about. You see, this passage is supposed to be about going the extra mile to maintain relationships one with another. Not about justifying one's desire to keep a brother or sister on the straight and narrow. You see, the heart of the, this chapter in Matthew's Gospel is about forgiveness, not discipline. It's about how important it is for forgiveness, how important it is for God, and how important it is for you and me. Consider this. In the verses just before the passage we read today, Jesus tells a brief parable about God's abundant forgiveness and mercy. Jesus says that God is like a shepherd who leaves the 99 in order to go find the one sheep who has gone astray. Similarly, the verses just after our passage record Peter's question, how many times must I forgive someone? Should I forgive someone seven times? Jesus wasn't satisfied with Peter's limited forgiveness, even if it is quite abundant and generous compared to what we may be willing to do. Instead, Jesus says, not seven, but seventy-seven. In other words, we are to forgive as many times as it takes to love our neighbor back into right relationship. Which brings us back to this troublesome passage we've been dealt today. You see, without keeping the centrality of forgiveness in our relationships firmly in mind, it's easy to hear this passage as some sort of divine process for dealing with those bothersome Christians. You know who they are. <laughs> Step one, take the offender aside and show him the error of his ways. <laughs> Step two, bring one or two brothers to confront said offender. Step three, shun and or banish the unrepentant offender. You see, taken out of context and read all by itself, this passage becomes one that is wide open to abuse. It's one where well-meaning people decide to have a scriptural confrontation with someone they fear is backsliding. In the process, rather than bringing folks back into relationship, the one who is subjected to the confrontation feels humiliated ostracized, shamed, and shunned. You know, I've heard of instances where church leaders have skipped step one and two and gone right into step three, surprising an individual by denouncing them from the pulpit. So don't worry, we're not going to call anybody out. <laughs> and that sadly misses the point of this passage. The primary goal is not to coerce someone to repent. That is a rigid business management approach to enforce church order. Rather, the goal of this passage is more relational. It is to restore a damaged relationship by being vulnerable enough to speak truthfully about the hurt that you felt you might be experiencing. It's about taking responsibility for your feelings and your actions and then openly and honestly inviting the other person to do the same. It's about inviting dialogue so that together 
You both might find a way forward. Read this way, the verses are remar remarkably refreshing. Because you see, they embrace one another in love. And perhaps more importantly, these verses are completely countercultural to the world in which we live today. You know, we live in a culture of de a digital dehumanization, where through social media one can lob an accusation about someone from a safe distance. We can spread half-truths or rumors that trash someone's reputation with impunity. We can share difficult news by an email rather than face-to-face -face confrontation. And sadly, today, there are those who believe that shooting first and then asking questions is a totally acceptable approach to dealing with conflict. All of these instances tells us that we are failing to take seriously the humanity of the person with whom we are in relationship. We are failing to see the God-given word well within a neighbor. And we are seeking quick remedies over the harder, slower process of dealing with one another in love. Jesus invites us to something deeper, into a relationship where we love one another enough to speak not just to, but with each other, listening as well as sharing, holding each other accountable through vulnerability rather than force. And you know what? It takes guts talk to someone you feel is in wrong without judging, without putting them down, without taking responsibility for their actions. And it takes guts to listen when someone else tries to do that to you. It takes maturity of spirit, and I believe that is the key to a healthy, loving, dare I say, Christian relationship. Good Lord, I wish relationships were easier. I really do. I wish they weren't so messy and painful at times. I wish people were as easy to deal with as I am of women. I, I don't think I really mean that. <laughs> <You're up. laughs> but the truth is, We all screw up. We all fall short. And it can be hard to forgive others for the wrongs they've done to us. But you see, when we do, when we let go of the burdens of accusation and blame, it's like a whole new world opens up. A whole world with great possibilities. So today, make the good news of this gospel serve as a challenge for us to commit going that extra mile regarding our relationships with one another so that with a full and clear heart we can build up the kingdom if we do then we will be on the path to building a community that truly does welcome all we will be a place that truly welcomes people home. May it be so.
came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became a human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gather in the name of Jesus who stands among us with upraised hands. Let us offer prayers for all in the name For Peter, our bishops, Father Dwayne, Brother Ray, for this holy gathering, and for the people of God in every place, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all peoples, tribes, clans, and families, and for mercy, justice, and peace in the world, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer for abundant fruits of the earth, and for safety from violent storms. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For travelers, particularly Robert Stoffer, Lord Easley, Eric Sanchez, and Rack Brown, and Paul Gusset. For refugees and prisoners and their families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, especially Sylvia's daughter, Brooke, Kat, Carleen Sanchez, and David Borelli, and Jeff Emery and Rosie Molina, and for all those continuing to be affected by the Ebola outbreak, and for the dying and the dead, especially in John Rivers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our city and those who live in it, and for our families, our companions, and all those we love, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer.
pray, sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept our sacrifice at your hands, to the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's church. O oh God, may this holy offering bring us blessing, accomplish with us its promise of salvation. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to Christ. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is the Word through whom you made the universe, the Savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this, he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, we join the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we sing.
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. 